Hi, I'm Calvin Elizabeth, a wedding photographer and bridal boutique owner based in San Diego. And today I'm gonna to be talking about why you don't have to have your bridal party be full of same-sex members. Now I was trying to figure out how to title this video in a way that would make the most sense to people figuring out if they should watch it or not. And basically I'm trying to say, if you are a bride, do all of your bridal party members have to be women? If you are a groom, do all of your bridal party members have to be men? And the answer is no, definitely not. That was absolutely the traditional path and it is what most people still do to this day. Will it be what most people continue to do over the next decade or two? Probably yes. But is it what you have to do? No. In the world of weddings, there are a lot of things that people feel like they have to do, but they absolutely do not have to do anything. There's a lot of have to's and should's that aren't actually have to's and should's. There's a lot of rules that aren't actually rules. They're just like things that people have done so people feel like they have to do them, but they really don't. So today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the logistics of and all the things that you might want to consider, say if you are a bride and you are considering having a man in your bridal party, and if you are a groom considering having a woman in your bridal party. So to speak a little bit about my personal history, I was a bride and I had a man, my one of my best friends, Chris, as my bridesman, man of honor, whatever you wanna call them. Um, you can pick the name or you can choose not to name. You can just say this is my bridal party and there is a man in it and I'm a bride, whatever, that's it. Um, so you can have titles or whatever you want or not have titles at all. So that was it. I had two bridesmaids and one man of honor or bridesman, whatever. I didn't really have like a maid of honor or whatever. There were no hierarchies in my bridal party. It was just, these are my people. I had three of them. They're all my best friends in different ways. So that's what I chose to do. Um, I wanted to have all of my best friends who are my best friends equally with me on my wedding day. And I would encourage all of you watching, if you have, let's say your bride, because most of the people who watch my videos, I would say just based on my YouTube statistics, would identify as a bride. So if you're a bride and one of your best friends happens to be a man, then I would say if you've been considering having him in your bridal party, but you have had hesitations because that is not a traditional thing or that's not something that's typically done, by all means, ask him if he would like to be in your bridal party. Do you have to include him in all of your little bridal party events if that's not something that he would enjoy? No, you can always invite him and say, hey, look, I know that this is gonna be an all women thing if you're not interested in attending, no worries, but invitation is out there. You can always do something like that. The invitation is there, but they don't have to take it and you will fully understand if they don't wanna join all the girls for a pedicure, but if they do, that's great. Maybe that they would be into something like that. It just really is gonna depend on the man and what they like to do and if they wanna join all of the typical little events or not. So to jump right in on the logistics of something like this, because you, some of you might be wondering how to handle this sort of situation. Touched a little bit about um, the showers and events. Um, I do think that you should invite all members of your bridal party, whether they are of the same sex as you or not, to all of your events, depending on the group that you already have. I hate to go here, but let's just get really specific. So let's say you have a group of women and you have a male bridal party member. I do think that for a lot of women, it would make them more comfortable. Let's say you're all going to a spa together. There might be like some skin exposed here and there. Probably will make them more comfortable if your male bridal party member does happen to be gay. Just being honest here, maybe you have a group of women who are comfortable either way, but I'm just gonna have to take a guess and say that most women are probably going to be more comfortable on average if the man happens to be gay. At least I might be in certain situations unless I grew up with that man and he was friends with me. But if you have one of those bridal parties where all of the people like don't really know each other, then that might be a little bit harder if they just meet this random man and you're now throwing them in if you have events that are really personal type events and there's like, I don't know, self-care services involved where there might be like, I don't know, really intimate type things going on. But if you were just having like a normal, like if you're just going to brunch and things like that, then it should not be a concern whatsoever. There shouldn't be any like privacy issues or things like that happening. So then you wouldn't really need to be concerned about that. If you have a bridesmaid who's concerned about your male friend Jerry coming to brunch, then maybe that's an issue with your bridesmaid that you need to take up. 
But if there's a bridesmaid a little bit concerned that Jerry's going to be coming to the spa and all of you are going to be in the same sauna room together, obviously that's a little bit understandable. So there might be some things depending on the events that you're going to be hosting that you might want to consider based on the logistics and the greater like relationship of the people and the, like the dynamics of the group. So just something to think about there. Um, now for like your wedding week and stuff happening, so say all of the women are having their hair and makeup done, if your like bridesman or man of honor, whatever, isn't having something like that done, he doesn't necessarily have to get there as early as all the women. You can let him sleep in and let him know what time to join in. Um, you can ask the photographer, hey, my bridesman isn't going to be getting here as early for the hair and makeup, but what time should he get here for all the pictures and the fun stuff? So definitely make sure that you're including um, the opposite sex member in the fun and the festivities, but don't make them feel like they have to be there for the parts that are not going to be necessary and make them wake up extra early because I wouldn't want to be up an extra two hours early if I didn't have to be, but that's just me. I'm not a morning person. Um, so that's pretty much logistics for like shower and events and things like that. Um, now the next part is more about like outfits and fashion and things like that. So for the wedding day morning, in terms of your getting ready outfits, I've talked a lot in the past. I might have an entire video on this, but I did just release a video on the wedding day morning where I encourage you guys to get robes or pajamas or something matching, or if you can't do that, have everybody dress in like the same kind of clothing or wedding color palette so that your wedding day morning photos look really beautiful and cohesive. So I actually have an example that I'm gonna put up right now. Um, one of my beautiful brides got all of her bridal party, which included um, one of her lovely male friends in the bridal party. She got all of them matching pajamas and you can see that her friend had a lovely matching pair to all of the ladies. So you can do something like this. If your bridesman is not quite as um, into the feminine pajamas, you could give him a pair that is a little bit more masculine. You could skip a set like this altogether and choose a much more gender, gender neutral set that will suit everybody. Now moving on to the actual wedding day attire itself. What I did for my bridesman, man of honor, is I had him wear a tuxedo and then I told him to pick out a bow tie that matched our bridesmaid dresses. Now for the bridesmaids, I just told them our wedding color palette. I actually gave them a selection of choices and they both ended up in a really similar color. So I didn't tell them to just choose that tone of pink. I gave them a selection and they just both happened to really like that really neutral blushy um, tone of pink. And I just told him to pick a tone of pink and that's what he chose. So he looks different from my husband's groomsmen, which were all in black tuxedos and black bow ties. So he stood out from them in the pictures, obviously in a very subtle way, but in the pictures, if you look at everybody, he is not in a black bow tie. He is in a pink bow tie. So he is with me in those pictures in my group. So that is a way that you can make sure that your guy, <laughs> your bridal party, does not match your partner's um, bridal party men, if there's any men in his, his or her bridal party, that they look distinct. So if you are a bride and you are having a man or men in your bridal party, then what I would recommend is getting them a bow tie or a tie that matches your bridesmaids dresses. Or if you aren't having any bridesmaids and you're only having men in your bridal party, then make sure whatever they're wearing for their little tie or bow tie or whatever is very different from the men in your partner. Or if there's no men, then you don't have to worry about it at all. But just make sure that they're not matching whatever the other men in your bridal party are wearing. Or if you are engaged to a man, then they're not matching the man. Um, or you can have them wear like a fun printed suit. If they're up for something like that, you can have them go really fashion forward with this. There's a lot of crazy stuff they can do that can look really cool. And lastly, if you are having um, the dilemma of who should do your toast. So typically, 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 um, meaning that it does not have to be done this way, but typically for a wedding, let's say you've got a bride and a groom, the maid of honor for the bride, and then the best man for the groom would be the ones doing the toast, but it does not have to be that way. Um, you can choose on both sides instead of doing that, simply the person who would be the best speaker. And honestly, that is actually what I would recommend is instead of it being the best man 
um, and maid of honor, just choose the people who would give the best speech because that's going to be the most entertaining and successful thing for your reception entertainment is to choose the person who's going to be the best speaker and who's going to give the most entertaining, the most hilarious, the most thoughtful, the most like emotionally charged speech of the evening. And that is what I would do. And regardless of their gender, just pick that person. So if it happens to be the man in your bridal party or the woman in your bridal party, go that route. My man of honor, bridesman, whatever, gave the toast. I didn't really, again, have hierarchy. I was just calling him bridesman or whatever, man of honor. Again, no titles really, but that's what it was. And I chose him because I felt like he was going to be able to give the best speech. I had known him the longest out of all of my people too. So that also really helped, um, but we, I chose him. So that was pretty much that. So I would say, don't feel like you have to fall back on that hierarchy of who is the um, best man or maid of honor, matron of honor or whatever. You can just simply choose the best speaker of the group or whoever is the person who's most comfortable public speaking. That can also be the easiest route. Just say, I'm gonna leave it open to you guys to choose who wants to give this speech. Are any of you extremely comfortable with public speaking? And if there's two of them who are like, yes, 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 they can do a dual speech or you could have two people give toasts and just say, hey, two minutes tops. You can do something like that. There's not a whole lot different to having um, multiple sexes in your bridal party. It is what it is, they're people. Um, people are people at the end of the day. Their gender and how they identify should not matter in your bridal party. They're just your people and that's what should matter. So don't let the gender, sex, whatever of a person keep you from putting them in your bridal party because at the end of the day, what I want for you and what you should want for you is to have the people that you love most next to you uh, on your wedding day for like the entirety of your wedding day. These are the people who you're gonna spend your wedding morning with and your wedding reception with. So make sure that they're all of the people that you want next to you and none of the people that you don't want next to you. So choose wisely and choose whoever they are regardless of whether they are a man, woman, or whatever they identify as. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions about this topic, please leave them down below and I will answer them and see you guys next time. Bye.